Hi, uh, my name is Gerald Reynolds. I'm from uh, uh, Portland, Oregon here, and uh, we have medical cannabis ourselves. Uh, here, you, you know, you have, I don't know what it's, what you're doing in Missouri. I really didn't write up on it. I'm so glad that you guys got it down, though. I'm just, uh, I'm elated for any of the states who pass a medical marijuana law. There's nothing but you can't you can't think of anything but well I'll be damned they finally read the science either that or maybe they got tired of people being you know addicted to opiates or trying uh, antidepressants for just about everything they can think of I get uh, I'm in a, a, a wheelchair at, as an amputee and uh, that's just one thing. I, I have CHF, uh, hepatitis. I get some of the worst migraines I've ever known, uh, known to me. I don't know. It re and they affect my whole body. I mean, there's a lot of issues I run into, pain issues and, and others. Uh, and, and to me, uh, for one thing, I, I've been on pain meds for years, and they wanted to keep... keep increasing my dose of uh, like methadone or whatever they had me on so much that I was uh, taking like uh, 300 some milligrams a day and I, I you know the pain was gone but I was like wasted and when you're loaded on opiates whether they be synthetic or whatever what, what, what have you but this kind of a, a narcotic you're asleep basically okay Man, was I glad when I was able to. You know, I, I've been using pot for a long time, actually, to be honest, uh, recreationally, ever since I was a kid, you know, since the, the 60s. Um, but I never thought of it as a, uh, you know, because I, I also got illicitly trying to get rid of the voices in my head, tried every other kind of drug in the world to, to, to try to do that. And the heroin worked real well because it really dulled every sense, so. I became addicted to that. Uh, cleaning up from that really wasn't as hard as I thought because it was basically a, a matter of making the right decision. Once I got over the physical withdrawal, then it was, you know, I had to decide whether I was going to use again or not. Uh, and therefore, I haven't. But uh, I know I'm on methadone, using medical marijuana, you're still an addict. They say this all the time. I hear this over and over again. But what an addict is, is a person who abuses it, uh, uh, any and all drugs, actually. Uh, an addict of one drug, uh, no matter what it is, alcohol, he will also want to get high on any other thing, substance, that he can get his hands on. It's that simple. That's why you find a lot of heroin addicts also drinking beer. Smoking meat or whatever. Even though pot. Doing cocaine, whatever. I mean, yeah, it's, addiction is addiction. But if you're able to to be a person like me who was addicted to opiates for the for many years, uh, because of trying to you know clean up my, my just get rid of the freaking voices, and whatever. When I did clean up, and I found out that after using the methadone for the withdrawals. So that I didn't have to face the cramping. And the, I didn't want to face all that crap. So I used the money I was making. Well, I was a slinger. So I had plenty of money. And I could buy all the methadone I needed. Which is what I did. And used it for about a week and a half. Two weeks. And then I cut, I just. Not just tapered it. But just didn't buy anymore. Because I knew. After a lot of research, methadone doesn't really, it doesn't really uh, cause a withdrawal symptom like the opiates themselves for some reason. Something about the, the methadone, in, in fact, it, it takes a long time for your body to assimilate to the point where it has a real need the methadone. Those who put people on methadone for maintenance, heroin maintenance, are killers. Yeah, they're uh, uh, they're not really treating the person. 
they say they, they make them go to classes and therapy. Of course they do. But then at the same time, they're giving them their drug every morning. They're still giving them their drug. And you know what these methadone addicts do? The ones that are on maintenance? They go outside the clinic, down the street, and sell each other their other pills and stuff. Their Xanax, their Valium, their, their Fenugrins, or and methadone is cheap for them. It's two, three bucks a day or something like that. The sun, actually, actually, uh, you know, if, you, if you're on state medical, it should pay for it. I mean, wouldn't they rather you're on some kind of maintenance or something besides jail? No, they don't care. Anyway, you use it, get off the damn shit. As soon as you're done with the withdrawal, after that, it's up to you. I'm able to do that. Others have too. You go ahead, rational recovery. Forget about all the blessed gods, demons, higher powers, because you're the one who has to decide what you do all day, every day, the rest of your freaking life. You. Alone. Have support if you want. If it's necessary, find it amongst the human population, please. You're going to need to talk to a person. And have them talk back. <laughs> you understand? Not prayers that really go unanswered. As far as medical marijuana goes, I no longer suffer really, as far as I'm concerned, from a schizo affected bipolar disorder. I haven't had a real maniacal thought in a long time. I haven't had a suicidal thought or a wanting to hurt anybody or nightmares or any of it for a long time. I still hear my voice once in a while. Lucas won't leave me alone. That's not it's not even close. And uh, I couldn't take in the uh, Zolops and the Prozacs and the uh, Gamma Pentons and the every other damn thing they call them. You know. And then they want to treat your uh, uh, like uh, fibromyalgia with uh, uh, with something they call it that zinner what is it is I met everyone it's an antidepressant I can tell by the way they, they give you these uh, warnings in the end you know about it creates nightmares and blah 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 it's the exact same thing that's what antidepressants do don't take them they're unnecessary use medical marijuana and think and I swear you will be cured. In fact, now they know that even ecstasy can be used on certain aspects of the brain because of its ability to treat inhibition, you know, no inhibition. Open up, get real feelings. You're not afraid and all that. It works, especially with like a, a study has been going on for, for uh, PTSD and uh, ecstasy, M MDA actually. Well, it can work. It's a, it, it is a, a, a drug that does completely just, you have no inhibitions whatsoever. doesn't mean you're a bad person. It's just mean you're not afraid to do something that you would not regularly do or think the way you wouldn't regularly think. Be unafraid to think something, which is what PTSD is about. You have this fear of these thoughts. And, and, well, you have to be there. You have to have been there. However, medical marijuana is another one that helps a lot. Because who can be sad and depressed when you've got something like this that is so, I mean, I mean, it grows on the earth and makes you happy. Is my answer. Thanks. Good night. Wonder why there aren't more.